Justin from Outlaw Euro. Welcome back to the channel. Today's BMW project is on this S63. It's found in the M5, M6, X5M, X6M. There's a few different variations of it. This one's in the F10 M5. And we're gonna show you guys how to replace the spark plugs and coils in it and take as little off as possible. The only difference on changing the plugs between this car and a stock version is gonna be the air boxes, which is where we're gonna start. The factory air boxes would be located right here. It's not too difficult to take those out. On this setup, it's gonna have the same as the factory clamp up here. So if you have the stock air boxes, you'll have an extra fastener here and here that we don't have with the RK carbon intake that we have on this. We also won't have to mess with the methanol kit that's installed on this M5. We have a video up on the channel about taking it to the dyno. should definitely check that out. But we're going to start with the end the intakes out so we can get some more access because the plugs and coils are way down there. To get to the plugs and coils that are located way down there on both banks, we're going to start by removing the two six millimeter clamps here. Now we're going to disconnect the mass airflow sensors on both sides by using a little flat blade screwdriver, separating this clip with the gray portion to separate there, and then push down on it, and then you can wiggle it back. On the passenger side, you do have to get the clip from the bottom there. Now we can remove the intake tube on each side. If you have the factory air boxes, you're gonna have a lot more room. Since these are the RK front mount intakes, there's not a lot of play there, but as you can see, we have access to the first plug-in coil on this bank, on the driver's side, and on the passenger side, we almost do one thing in the way on this side. On the passenger side, we're gonna remove the T25 Torx right here for this coolant reservoir. Then lift straight up and it comes out. On the driver's side, we'll take out the two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the power steering reservoir on. With these two nuts removed, we can just lift up on the power steering there. Now we have access to two plugs and coils on the driver's side. Next, make sure your battery is disconnected because we're gonna be unplugging the DME. It is possible to replace the plugs and coils further back here without removing the DME, but it will not be enjoyable. And there's a lot less of a risk unplugging the DME on this chassis compared to other BMW chassis, where if you unplug or disconnect the battery, the footwell module doesn't come back online when you reconnect it. So on the S63 powered BMWs especially, just go ahead and disconnect the battery and undo the DME connectors. Most of them only go on one way, but starting on the driver's side here, first one, pull up on that and pull it back. On the next one here, push on both sides and pull it back. Little clips right there and there. And then on the square one, same deal. Just push there and there. And then on these three, these are the cam style ones. So you push here and then rotate the top piece past the little plastic piece you're pushing in. And then push it forward and it ejects it for you. And then same thing on the last two. With the DME connectors undone, we can do the two T30s right there and there. Once the DME connectors are undone, and then the hold downs are undone, you can just kind of pull it up and forward, latches in on the bottom onto this bracket. Now we're starting to make some more room. While we're in DME mode, we might as well just do the same thing to the passenger side. The DME connectors are the same, just in reverse order.
Now we will be removing the two T27 bolts right there and there. So we can get this bracket out of the way. It'll be the same on the passenger as it is on the driver's side. A magnet helps to get to these two. Now we'll disconnect the wiring that is connected to the bracket, like these two O2 sensors. Just lift up on the tab and pull it out. So both of the DMEs have coolant going to them. And I really don't want to open up the cooling system on it. So what we're gonna do, if you pull the DME back here, you can see the bracket right there that's holding the coolant lines in. We'll pop it free from that. So now the DME can move a little bit more without stressing out those lines. And if we lift up on this brace here, we have access to that ground. Now we can take the 10 millimeter nut off of the ground on both sides. Now we can remove the bracket. Some of the wiring harness may be stubborn to come out of the holder down here, but you can just give it a little extra force where it clips in to these plastic pieces and it'll come right out. Now we have access. All of this can move, and we didn't even have to open up the cooling system for the DME, so that's awesome. On the passenger side, we have access to the back plugs and coils. I think we can weasel our way into the front one too. On this particular vehicle, I'm most curious about the furthest cylinders back on both banks, number four and eight, and I also kind of want to get the easy ones out of the way now. So we're going to start in the back, work our way forward. Starting with number eight, it's like most traditional BMW coils. You just pull back on the top part and the connector will come out. Same with number seven. Number six. And the still pretty buried number five. If you have access to compressed air, now's a good time to blow air around the coils so things don't fall down into the spark plug tubes. And then when you take the spark plugs out, they fall into the cylinder. That would be a bad day. Sometimes BMW coils get stuck. So it helps to try to twist them a little bit beforehand. Make sure not to twist too much and break that piece. And then pull up on them also. And we can look inside the coil. This isn't the best, but definitely not the worst we've seen on an F10 M5. Number seven. Number six. And it's still very buried, number five. While we're on a roll, might as well just get a four, three, two, and one disconnected. Four, three, two, and one. With all the coils removed, we can now remove the spark plugs. On this F10M5, we'll be installing NGK spark plugs. These are number 97506. They're two steps colder because of the methanol and the custom tune on it. We will also be gapping them to 20 thousandths. So take your favorite 14 millimeter 12 point spark plug socket and an extension that can reach and we can remove the spark plugs. Now we can use the magnet from earlier to pull the spark plugs out of the tube safely so they don't drop. Or if you don't have a magnet, you could use the coil also and get it out that way. Here's all the spark plugs from bank two. These are Bosch and looks like they are genuine BMW M. There is a lot of discoloration. The wear isn't too bad, but like I said, we need to go two step colder. 
Now we'll do the same on bank one. Bank one spark plugs out. Our new spark plugs are ready to go. Recommend checking the gap on them. These were all between 0.28 and 0.30, but always good to double check. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we did regap these, but that's because it's running methanol, custom tune, has the front mount intakes, and upgraded turbos. BMW doesn't recommend to use any type of anti-seize on the threads right here, or like a silicone for where the coils go around the plug. So, pretty much, grab our spark plug installer here and we're ready to go so this is just a rubber fuel line and the reason why we're using that to install them is so we can put them down in there and start them by hand if it's cross threaded by chance and the resistance gets too high because it's cross threaded then it won't get any tighter the spark plug will just spin inside of the hose here to prevent damage to the head and then then when it does get tight enough, and you can feel it just spins there, we can just pull the hose right out. So let's get the other seven installed and then we can torque them down. Another good reason to use the rubber hose here, some spark plug sockets, don't have a rubber piece in here or a magnet and so the plug can just fall right out and so when you go to put it in the hole it falls down damages the plug on the end there and then some spark plug sockets like the ones that do have the rubber piece in when you're trying to get the socket back out the socket will stay and come off the extension be stuck down there and then on the magnetic ones it'll hold it in and you can pull the socket back out but if you do happen to cross thread it it's just going to bite right away make the problem a lot worse so that's why we use the rubber hose but now that all the spark plugs are in and finger tight we get the torque wrench and we'll torque them down to 30 newton meters got the torque wrench got it set to 30 newton meters installing the coil is pretty easy you see here the coil goes in that tube there and then it has a triangle kind of shape if you look at right there if you look at this coil it's also a triangle shape, so you can just put it in there, line those two spots up, you should feel resistance, and then you'll hear an audible noise when you get it fully seated. And then on the connector, when you put that in, you want to have this tab here up, put the connector on, and it starts to close. A lot of them you can fully seat without pushing this on, but you definitely want to be able to put the top clip on, pull it, and not see a gap right there. But now that we have the spark plugs torqued, we know how to put the coils on. Put all the coils on the passenger side. And the driver's side, getting them all connected to the engine wire and harness. When installing the DME connectors, you're gonna do the opposite of the removal. So on the driver's side, we started over here. So to reinstall them, we're gonna start over here with the cammed connectors. When reinstalling the DME connectors, you're gonna start from the opposite side of the removal. So we started over here. So now we're gonna put them back over here. On the cam connectors, make sure that this part is all the way up. Insert it into the DME. If it's not going in like this one's not, it's because it's not in the right spot. This one slides right in to that spot. This one goes right there. Which means this one goes here. So just seat it in there fully. The gray part will come back. And then while you have pressure on it, lock it in place. Now I'll do that with the rest of the connectors here. And then these ones just snap into place. And then that one 
just slide this top piece up, insert it, hold some pressure, lock it in place. And don't forget to attach the ground wire on each side and it's 10 millimeter nut. Now we can reattach the power steering reservoir here and it's two 10 millimeter nuts indicated by the blue on them. And the coolant reservoir for the turbo system. Making sure it attaches in the bottom first and then we can put the Torx bolt in the top. And finally, we can reinstall the intake tubes and the mass airflow sensors. Now we can get it in and test it out. All right, so we're gonna check it for codes using the snap-on scanner. No codes present. And then on this one, we'll likely reset the adaptions also. All right, the adaptions have reset, so we're gonna start it back up. I'm hoping somebody found this useful and decided to save a little bit of money and get their hands on their S63 powered M car. Ownership is a lot better when you get more acquainted with the vehicle. But don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and helps us make more DIYs. And let us know in the comments if there's things you guys want to see, especially on E60 M5s, F10 M5s, E46s, M3s. Let us know what you guys want to see and we'll be glad to make it.